Wilson. I'm here today to resume a personal quest to photograph a live timber rattlesnake in the wild near the western New York and Pennsylvania state borderline. Before exploring Letchworth State Park, I have returned to Rimrock, which is located just off of Route 59 near the Kinzu Dam, approximately 11 miles east of Warren, Pennsylvania. This promising area was scouted last summer. A little further investigation was necessary before moving on to the next geographic point of interest. So let's enter the park and take a closer look at what should be excellent rattlesnake habitat. Before entering the park, a quick sweep around the parking lot and the picnic area will be taken. There are picnic tables, grills, and portage. Parking and admission to the park are free of charge. As Rimrock is being approached, the walk is heading to the southwest. The sign that appeared to start this video segment is a map of a hiking trail that leads from this point down to the base of the rim and through the forest to a public beach that is located near Wolf Run Marina. Right now the beach is directly in the opposite direction between here and the Kinzu Dam. A closer look at the map will be featured near the end of this video. As the trail progresses forward, a set of stairs has been reached. While well, stopping on them momentarily, the initial look around looks very promising. I'm just below that initial set of stairs leading down to the trail and looking back at them. There are plenty of rocks here for basking and cover. The foliage above isn't too thick to prevent some sunlight from occasionally penetrating these rocks to warm them. The only red flag so far is that there is way too much human activity here. The next set of stairs will lead down to the scenic vista overlooking a cove in the reservoir from the top of a high rocky cliff. The scenic vista is starting to peer ahead as the descent down the stairs is being made. This is quite a view. Some people can be heard talking below at the bottom of this overlook. It sure is a long way down. A stairway leading down there hasn't been seen, but there are some steep narrow trails leading down there that have been. For today, I'll err on the side of caution and stay up here since I'm alone and unprepared to do any climbing. The hike will continue around the rim of the rock. This area is within the Ranger District. A local resident recently informed me that rattlesnakes have been found in this general area, and it looks rather obvious why. And now the end of the rim is being reached. A look down the side of this massive rocky cliff is pretty impressive. It sure would be nice to be able to look around down there where there is likely a lot less human activity. The hike has led away from the overlook and back towards the flat hilltop. No snakes have been seen out in the open, and most of the rocks here are too big and deeply embedded to flip over. This crevice is good cover and protection from predators in the sun. These are the types of places where I'd expect to find them. A chipmunk can be seen hiding under this rock ledge. To see small game for the snakes to feed upon in an area like this is a very good sign. Another chipmunk has been seen hiding under another rock. This is just one of many seen and heard so far. Seeing them is a good sign, but seeing too many of them could indicate that there aren't enough natural predators around to keep their population down. These chipmunks are used to being fed by visitors and have become practically tame. A few rocks and logs were flipped over to see if any small snakes might be hiding underneath them, and a few stick piles were searched through, but these were very scarce up here. Once again, no snakes of any species were found.
This is a final sweep around for a look at the hilltop terrain before heading to the next stop. It's getting later in the day and there is another place nearby that was noticed on the way here. I would definitely like to explore this area again in greater detail, perhaps next summer when it can be planned and the search can begin much earlier in the day. This set of stairs leads down to the base of the rim where the hiking trail continues. The first few minutes of this video was actually the scouting footage filmed above the rim last summer. Now we begin with the footage that was filmed this summer. Believe it or not, this stairway was missed altogether last year. Sometimes the easiest way to hide something is to place it in plain sight. Walking down these stairs is a very tight squeeze. The sound of my wrecking bar scraping against the rocks during the descent can occasionally be heard. The air is very cool in here. It feels remarkably good on such a warm day. Walking through this narrow pass reminds me of Fat Man Squeeze, which is where the base of the formations in Rock City Park are accessed. An opening is starting to become visible ahead. The area to the left is just a place to stop for a few minutes to cool down and take a rest. It also allows other sightseers to pass by when climbing in the opposite directions. There really isn't much to see once there and looking over the edge. Now the descent will continue down the stairs to the base of the rim. The hardest part of the climb is over and there isn't much further to go. The base of the rim has finally been reached. Looking southwest, the main rock formation sure does go a long way up. A rock overhang near the ground that is seen ahead is worth investigating. There has been quite a lot of human activity in this area today, so no snakes are likely to be encountered out in the open this close to the main trail. But there is always a good possibility that one may be hiding somewhere like this. A closer investigation reveals nothing. This is a quick look back at the stairs that were just descended. The main rock formation is not quite as epic as Rock City Park, but it is still rather impressive to look at. Although the base of the rocks can be followed in this direction, the main hiking trail will branch off to my left. This will now be followed for a very short distance. The one pitfall to following it all the way to the beach is that you will have to turn around and hike all the way back here to Rimrock if there isn't somebody readily available to pick you up. This is a little further down the main hiking trail. You'll notice a trail marker on a tree coming into view on the right. Since the trip was not made here to go hiking, a trip back to the rocks will be made to hopefully find some snakes. A walk will be continued to the southwest from the stairs along the base of the rim to showcase the main formation just a little bit more before heading downhill. The stone wall seen to the left is a fairly notable feature. Garter snakes are known to like nesting in these if they can. The small rocks on the elevated flat area do get exposed to the sun and warmed up. Normally this would make a good place to bask. As the walk along the base of the rim continues, I'd like to mention that snakes don't actually like the sun, only the warmth that it provides. Since they are cold-blooded, too much exposure to it can kill them. Warm places without direct exposure to the sun to warm up their body temperature are more preferable. There are certainly a lot of hiding places in these rocks. It sure would be nice to find a snake lying out in the open for a change instead of having to investigate hiding places where they might be found. In addition to protecting themselves from the elements, they must also hide from their own natural predators. 
Some common foes to all species of snakes are raccoons, birds, other snakes, turtles, and us. After walking a little further to near the end of the base of the main rock formation, the search will be resumed downhill where there is less human activity. Here's a quick sweep in that general direction. The terrain looks more promising and littered with many smaller rocks as the end of the rim is within sight. Most of these smaller rocks are too heavy and deeply embedded into the ground to be flipped over. Here's a quick look uphill before venturing downhill where there are many more rocks and smaller formations to explore. And this is awesome snake habitat. The search has led downhill a little way from the main rock formation. As you can tell, it's much quieter here. The odds of making an encounter here are much better since there is less human traffic and noise being made. A timber rattlesnake is the snake that is being sought, but the opportunity to see and film any species of snake will be welcomed. A lot has been learned on this quest so far by finding various species of snakes and then researching the species that was just encountered afterwards. Unfortunately, it isn't always possible to get them on film. They are often gone before the camera can be set up. Snakes can feel the vibrations on the ground when anything large passes through. Although they can't hear, this scares most of them off before being seen. We are now walking very slowly and softly. In addition to an abundance of chipmunks, other forms of prey have been found that snakes will commonly feed upon, like this small toad. A blue spotted salamander was also uncovered and took refuge in this rotting wood pile. The wrecking bar is being used to uncover it. To use bare fingers to do this and risk getting bitten if there is a small snake hiding in here too would be very unwise. This is my nephew Hurricane Cyrus. We have already checked this nook and found it clear of snakes before he entered it. There are crevices here that go deep under the rocks that we wanted to expose with a flashlight. Any of these could potentially lead to a snake den. There is no telling whether this crevice goes further back than it appears or if it twists down into the ground into a den. Another important snake fact to note is that snakes also need places like this to cool down their body temperature when they get too warm since they are cold-blooded. These types of places are far more than just a place to hide from predators. This is a very positive sign. For one species of snake can be found, others will be till. This garter snake is basking out in the open in a little sunlight peeking through the trees onto these dry leaves. There are 13 known species of garter snakes found in North America. Their coloration varies widely by species and habitat, making some subspecies difficult to identify. They are also the most common species of snake found in North America. I would guess by the checkered pattern along its back that this is the eastern garter snake or Thamnophis sertalis sertalis. Adults are usually anywhere between 18 and 26 inches in length, but can occasionally get as long as 4 feet. They can also live 8 to 12 years in captivity, probably a lot less on the average in the wild. They share a den to hibernate with hundreds of other garter snakes for the winter. This den is often shared with other species of snakes as well. Notice the flickering of the tongue. This is how they smell, by tasting the air. Also notice the round pupils in the eyes. In this general region, that is usually an indicator that they are non-venomous. However, that rule of thumb may not be true in all parts of the world. Unlike this snake, a venomous snake usually has slits for pupils. Also note that this snake's head is about as wide as its neck. A venomous snake has a larger triangular shaped head caused by venom glands where the cheeks are. Again, this rule of thumb is not necessarily true in all parts of the world. 
One exception in North America is the coral snake. Garter snakes were thought to be non-venomous, but it has been recently discovered that they actually do have a very weak venom. It's not considered lethal to a man though. They also have small teeth instead of fangs, which isn't a very effective delivery system. Complications from infections are the most likely results of a bite. This specimen will not be handled to harm. That way, there is no risk to it or to us. Their diet is a wide variety of slugs, worms, insects, mice, frogs, salamanders, and small fish. They are often found in people's gardens where they feed upon slugs. Slugs destroy crops, so garter snakes do benefit us. They coexist well with us, but the converse is usually not true. Juvenile garter snakes or neonates are born live. There can be anywhere from 3 to 100 born at a time. They are 6.5 to 9 inches in length. They are totally independent upon birth and left to fend for themselves. As you can see, they are very well camouflaged. If this snake laid still, it would blend in and look just like a stick. In addition to common predators, a couple of surprise predators that the neonates are prone to are bullfrogs and crayfish. These snakes adapt well to many environments but prefer moist areas and thus are commonly found near water where there is more prey. High grass and forest floors are very common too. They also like basking on rocks that they can quickly and easily slip under to hide from predators at the first sign of danger. The garter snake gets its name from the distinct horizontal stripes found along their sides and along their spine, like a garter belt. The stripes are not as prominent on this particular species. When captured, they will secrete a strong musky smell in an attempt to discourage a predator from eating them, similar to what a northern water snake would do. To a strong-nosed critter, it must be a very unpleasant odor. Lastly, these creatures do not make good pets. The cruelest thing that we can do to them is to take them out of their natural habitat and not allow them to be wild anymore. Once again, no rattlesnakes have been encountered, but at least a garter snake was found and filmed successfully. The quest will likely be resumed at Letchworth State Park, which is located near Portageville, New York. Rattlesnakes have been sighted and filmed there in each of the last two summers. Hopefully that trend will continue this summer as well. I'm Mark Tex Wilson. Thanks for watching.